Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner. First question. You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. President Trump answered questions at the National Association of Black Journalists Conference. And let's just say it didn't go very well. So in this video, we're going to break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, President Trump goes to the National Association of Black Journalists. This is a Q&A uh, thing that is going on. Uh, both President Trump and President Biden was invited to this. Obviously, Biden dropped out of the race. And then uh, Kamala Harris was also invited to this as well. But unfortunately, for whatever stupid reason, she couldn't attend. OK, got it. Now, there is so much to get through. So what I'm going to do is just get into the first clips, which are before he actually showed up and all of the backlash when people found out that he was coming to this event. And then I'm going to show you guys some clips of the event where some things really <laughs> went haywire. So without further ado, let's play the first clip. Former President Trump is expected to hit town tomorrow and it's already causing backlash. He's expected to speak here in front of the National Association of Black Journalists. Paris Schatz joins us from outside the Chicago Hilton where that event is happening. Paris. Terrence and Sylvia, this is the annual giant convention held by the NABJ, and it got thrown on its head late last night when the Trump campaign and event organizers announced that the Republican nominee would be here tomorrow, Wednesday, for a presentation and Q&A with political reporters. The convention co-chair has already quit in protest to the decision, and today NABG president Ken Lemon is defending the move. For us as journalists, people who go into and have very uncomfortable conversations for the sake of our members, this is an important time. This is a great opportunity for us to vet the candidate right here on our ground. And that's what we did. A lot of people are speculating. These discussions have gone on in earnest, in true earnest, probably more than a month uh, back and forth with both teams, even be before it was Kamala and was Biden. OK, so obviously this is like normal business, right? I mean, you're always going to have people protest. And I find it funny that the co-chair actually quit uh, in a way to protest him arriving. And I just think it's a contradiction of the whole premise about journalism. Journalism is all about going into hostile territory, asking tough questions, getting unbiased information, and then just reporting that. Right. And so I, I find it very hypocritical that they would actually do that. And so that even leads us to people like this. What is the main problem with NABJ inviting Donald Trump? to be interviewed tomorrow at the conference in Chicago. Look, we've always invited presidential candidates, Republicans and Democrats. 1996, Bob Dole and Jack Kemp were there in Nashville. 2016, uh, 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 Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were invited. Trump did not come. He did not come in 2017, 18, 19 or 20. The difference here is Donald Trump has been far more vicious in his attacks on journalists, on journalism and the fourth estate. He has pushed fake news. He has sat here and lied about the election results. And so the reason I've been so upset is because when the news came out, is first, there is no way Harris Faulkner and Fox News or any representative of Fox News should be on any stage at NABJ questioning Donald Trump after they paid $787 million to settle a case where they lied about the election and they knew they were lying. They have a second case that's going on. Two, no black male journalists. Got 4,000 members. I'm down for the sisters. And if there were three black men and no sisters, I would be joining the sisters saying, what representation? Thirdly, right. no black owned media. We're in Chicago. I'm here to cover the Sonia Massey rally at Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church on the west side. This city has a rich, deep history with the black media. Ebony, Jet, Chicago Defender, Ida B. Wells, married Fred Barnett. Uh, in terms of moving here, working for his newspaper. Okay, so uh, a couple of points I want to address. Number one, and let's get with the stuff I do agree with, uh, black media, uh, the black 
representation, both men and women, should have been there. Um, I think if you're going to call yourselves the National Association of Black Journalists, then I think there should be a, 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 a big event around this. I mean, you're having it at the Hilton. I, I, I mean, I would imagine this should be a bigger event. But hey, that's a whole nother thing. Now, the whole thing about him being vicious towards black journalists, you see, I would at least respect if he had just said he's vicious towards journalists. But you're always going to have black people that make it about being black. Right. So if he's vicious towards journalists, that means he's vicious towards black journalists. So they're making it a race thing when it has nothing to do with that. And when we get into these clips, I'm going to show you, you're going to see why he is so combative with these journalists. And this is another thing that no one wants to admit because they don't want to humanize President Trump from day one. The media turned on him. You guys got to understand before 2016. Everybody loved President Trump. The black community loved Trump so much. He was in hip hop videos, movies, TV shows, right? I mean, this guy was celebrated all around in all communities. He was looked at as an icon of American history. But then when he runs for the presidency, now you guys want to switch up and get amnesia. So I find it funny, the hypocrisy, especially from the black community, where they've used his likeness so much in media and now all of a sudden he's racist and he's vicious and he's all these crazy things and it's black people who keep pushing the narrative that's creating more people to be divided in this country and i'm going to show you guys a quick example of that let's play this clip trump is um, in the vein of those who were strong proponents of segregation you know look you know the Black press has played an integral role in the transformation of our city here in Chicago, uh, but as well as our country and our world. Um, we're going to be prepared as a city um, if he decides to actually arrive in Chicago uh, to make sure that um, the nastiness in the iniquitous formation that he brings, that that doesn't stain the soul of Chicago. Wow. Yeah. Stain the soul of Chicago. So he's saying President Trump has the ability to stain the soul of Chicago. Listen here, sir. Mayor Brandon Johnson, you and the last mayor have stained the soul of Chicago. You've allowed crime to go unchecked in your own damn city. And then you're spending money and resources on all those migrants that have been bust up there and you're not taking care of your own citizens. So before you come over here and cast aspersions on President Trump, check your own house. I mean, come on. Just this is why I'm saying the country has become so divided because one side is leading without good faith. Right. They lead with this this egregious intention to just cast this negative cloud over President Trump when there is no data, statistics or studies or recorded history to show that he is who they say he is. Okay, so now it's time to look at that Q&A with President Trump and the National Association of Black Journalists. Play the clip. I wanna start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> and I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country. Uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, 
which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've uh, done so much. And, you know, and I say this, uh, historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them and I gave them long term financing and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. Trust you with another I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work, in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let me just ask a, a follow-up, sir. I mean, wow, right? I mean, they. I think what happened with the backlash is they just made sure that she was going to be the first person to challenge him, just right out of the gate. I think they already did not like that he was going to be there. So he's already going into a hostile territory, right? There's a lot of people protesting of him being there. And so, of course, they're going to let her ask the first question. And... You know, it, it, I served in the military 13 years. And one thing that I hate seeing, especially when there's a president, a former president in a building in a professional scene, like a, 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 a professional environment, is there's no decorum. There's no courtesy. There's no respect. Like, hey, President Trump, here's my question. Thank you for attending President Trump. Not Mr. Trump. It's President Trump. Just like it would be Vice President Harris or it would be President Biden, right? That's how they should be addressed in a professional setting. We're not at the golf course or at a party. I mean, damn. And she's a journalist. And that's why I'm saying when people are like, well, he's vicious towards, you know, journalists and all this other stuff, they have zero respect for him. This is the energy that they give out. So he's from New York. You give that type of energy to any New Yorker and they're going to come back times 10. So please, let's understand that. That's number one. Number two, read the room, lady. If this is really about black people, why are you bringing up old shit? Why wouldn't you just lead with, hey, listen, we already know you had all these issues in the past. There's been both sides that are divided. But let's let's talk about what's really important. What are you going to be doing moving forward to help black people? That should have been the first question. Not about, well, you said this and you said that. That's what I'm saying. These people, they are so hypocritical. On one hand, they come out and they say, well, he's racist and he's vicious. But they lead with that type of energy. They were vicious in the way that they approached him to begin with. This is a former president. It does not matter whether you like him or not. Respect the title. Respect the presidency. You know, and they're supposed to be journalists, by the way. But let's play this other clip. Let's listen to this, by the way. You're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work? Really? Really? The president of the, of the United States, you're supposed to be representing black people. This is supposed to be about black journalism, and you guys can't even get your shit together. Come on now. You can't have it both ways. If they were on time, if they were courteous, if she addressed them the proper way, President Trump, and then he responded that way, that'd be something. But when you lead with that, and you're late and he was early. I mean, come on, guys, stop it. Knock it off. Let, let's move move to the other clip. Uh, some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define diversity, it? equity, inclusion? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me, is that. That is. Give me a definition, the then. Would you give me a definition DI. of that? Give me a definition. Sir, of I'm that. asking you a question. No, no, a you very have to define question. it. Define the. Define it for me, if you. I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So, 
Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody a should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. said? I mean, I really don't know. Could be, could be. There are some, and there are uh, plenty. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. <laughs> And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that Well, interview. you told me it was the longest one of your life, so <laughs> we had a good discussion. I mean, the whole DEI hire thing, right? You see how they just want to push that so much? And the fact of the matter is, she is a DEI hire. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, which means they want to include more women in leadership. They want to be more diverse. No, no more white people. Let's use people of color. So... She is a DEI hire. Now, obviously, for political reasons, he cannot say that because people are too damn sensitive about it. Right. And they, 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 they want it both ways. They want to claim her as this DEI hire for our for vice president that the first white president selected the first person of color as vice president. They want to claim that. But they don't want the Republicans to come out and claim it and say that, too. So, you know, it's just the hypocrisy, as always. And I'm telling you, these questions are so hostile. Of course, um, this was going to happen. We know what it is. People hate him. They hate his guts. There, there's no question about it. I mean, there are people who want him dead. There's no question about that. And they're so blinded by their hatred for him that they can't see that even though they don't like him as a person, the policies that he's going to implement will do more good for the black community than the policies from Vice President Harris. There is no question about that. Recorded history shows that, especially recent history over the last four years. And what I wish he would have stated about uh, why th they should be voting for him, it really comes down to one major thing. In the inner cities where there's a high concentration of black people, the people who have been migrating to these cities, because they're sanctuary cities like Chicago, um, they are impacting black people, not black jobs. It's not just black jobs. It's the resources of the city itself, meaning the city already went into this year saying, hey, this is our budget for our community. They can no longer execute that budget because now they're diverting funds. They're diverting resources to these migrants and they're choosing migrants over the black community, over the Indian community, over the white community. I mean, replace the word. But the principle is still the same. We cannot, as a country, just take on 20 million migrants and just think everything is fine. It's not. Okay, so as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you guys because there's so many things to actually go through in this video. We don't have all that time. I do encourage you to go watch this video because it really is an example of what's coming, right? And if President Trump makes it back into the White House, this is exactly how the media is going to treat him. There's going to be a lot of people who do not care about asking questions that actually matter to the American people. They're going to be asking questions from a place of hatred and not necessarily from a journalistic unbiased standpoint. Right. And so all I really want to say is this. If you know that President Trump is showing up and you know you don't really want him there, why do it in the first place? Right. If you're going to be so nasty with him and you're not even going to respect his time and you don't even have your shit together where your equipment doesn't even work, they couldn't even hear themselves on the stage. I mean, then why even do it in the first place? Right. Why not wait until Vice President Harris can do it in person? Why not just do that? You know, um, I, I just I just find it to be sloppy on their behalf. And not only that, as black people, we can't even get our own act together in our own house. You got multiple journalists and the co-chair protesting this. So they're not even on the same page as a unit. They're not even unified on saying, hey, let's get all of the candidates here. Bring RFK Jr., bring Trump, bring Harris, bring them all and put them all on the same stage at the same time. I don't understand why they couldn't do that. But hey, that is my mindset on this. What is yours? What do you guys think about uh, this interview? There's going to be a lot of wild takes. There's going to be the news uh, stations 
calling him racist because of how he reacted to the question, which there's nothing racist about what he said because they hate him and they're overly sensitive. We know this. And then what do you, you think about his answers, how he had to basically defend himself, right? They weren't really asking him genuine questions. Um, they were looking to agitate, agitate, agitate. I want to hear what you guys have to say and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.